strong arming the industry and everything. Uh, Spider-Man, Alan Wake, ridiculous fishing. Uh, devs speak up in support of con cults, consultancy, consultancy, damn it, studio Sweet Baby Inc. Uh, after online group claims firm pushing agenda into games it worked on. Online group, I wonder, I wonder what, what that mm. means. Yeah. Gamergate 2? Gamergate 2, Electric Boogaloo, here we go! Hell yeah, I'm excited. Uh, just so you know, uh, apparently this article, when it was tweeted out on Twitter, on the Twitters, uh, it got uh, community noted that they don't mention in this article how the Sweet Baby Inc. employees were attacking people and calling them names and calling people babies and calling people, uh, you know, the gamer words. Calling us evil. Uh, all right. So it says, Mary Kenny, Associated Narrative Director at Insomniac Games, has discussed the current online discussion surrounding narrative development and consultancy firm Sweet Baby Inc. Uh, to recap, Sweet Baby Inc. recently became the target of a group which claimed the company was forcing studios it worked with to increase diversity within its games and accused of it uh, of pushing a, quote, woke agenda into the industry. Following a report into the claims by Kotaku, a number of game developers have spoken up to clear up misconceptions about what companies like Sweet Baby Inc. actually do. I'm going to stop you right fucking there, okay? Um, Eurogamer, let me stop you right fucking there, okay? If a uh, company is being accused of nefariously injecting personal politics into their games, if they're being accused of all these evils, uh, like Potion Sword Run just showing up in the middle of a stream. Uh, and then suddenly, game developers, not, not the companies, but the game developers are coming out, right, uh, to defend them. When the accusation is that if they don't listen to Sweet Baby Ink, Sweet Baby Ink will, as the head of Sweet Baby Ink said herself, terrorize the uh, members of the company and tell them that if they don't do what they say, that they'll uh, show them how it would be negatively affecting the company on social media. What's up, Potion? You did an article on. I've been going. You did a video on Sweet. Yeah, Baby I've been Inc. I've been covering this from the from the jump. Um, and like I said. Um, in my videos, the media, they're all in cahoots. They're all dropping off these articles trying to cover for Sweet Baby Inc. and all those different companies that do third-party consultants. Um, but they went around it, they went about it the wrong way, obviously, you know, trying to get people censored and stuff. Um, and that's pretty much what started it all. They could have just let it be. It would have been a small little group, maybe in the, you know, 10,000, not 100,000. So, yeah, they kind of they did, it, did it on themselves. These these people literally went into a Discord server and tried to start doxing people to find out who they were because they were oh, speaking yeah. out against Sweet Baby. Oh, that was her investigative journalism, dude. So you know yeah. she was infiltrating the ser the server. Uh, it's crazy! It's crazy that they would think that that would you know that's a yeah, thing to do. Steam, them who they are, why are they hiding their identity and you know, all this stuff. Yeah. Steam, then they tried to get the Sweet Baby Inc. detected, which was like a, um, what do they call those? A curator was group. A, so, yeah, a curator group that was basically saying, hey, these are the games that Sweet Baby Inc. worked on or potentially worked on. Like, cause I, I think part of the issue is that there's it's not 100%. Like, you can't just look up a game and be like, oh, Sweet Baby Inc. worked on it, right? So I can understand them being like, hey, we didn't actually work on some of those games. Maybe. Then, right, but not to be like, hey, get this fucking group taken down because they're terrorizing. Uh, if there was no problem, if Sweet Baby Inc. wasn't doing anything bad, right, and people uh, were still buying the games, regardless of Sweet Baby Inc. detected or people going, hey, that's a Sweet Baby Inc. game, right, uh, then we wouldn't be here. But apparently, that's not the problem. The problem is, right, because people are going, hey, that's a Sweet Baby game, and then people are like, I ain't going to buy it. Right? I'm not going to buy that game because I don't want the woke agenda. And they're freaking out because they want to insert the woke agenda, right? And I'm usually the guy, I'm usually the calm guy who goes, no, 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 you know, that's not woke. It's not woke. But, uh, with you know, the way the media has been covering this, I remember back in the Gamergate days, they did the same thing. Yeah. Uh, you got your Whisper Networks, your Backdoor Deals. Uh, you got journalists who are who are friends with people like Sweet Baby Inc. writing hit pieces on, on people exposing this and talking about it. 
Uh, like you said, you got the investigative journalists running into Discord servers trying to dox people. Uh, you got hit piece after hit piece. You got people all over Twitter. You got all the astroturfing going on. History um, then with Sorry. yeah, with the uh, DEI stuff going on and everyone uh, getting the uh, what the, hell, the 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 scores where they get the uh, was it the G G something scores? You know what the fuck I'm talking about? Where the investments? They go, oh, how how woke is your game? Oh, your game's really woke. We're gonna invest in your company. Yeah, social credit. We'll go yeah. with that. It's crazy. It's crazy. And this this is just another article uh, playing fucking, um, you know, trying to white knight for Sweet Baby Inc. Because, again, if this was just a small little nothing firm, and you just be like, look, they didn't work on any games. Uh, you know, I haven't heard anyone come out and go, hey, they didn't work on our game. Hey, they're, they're, they're a nothing franchise. They're, they work on, like, three games, right? No. Everybody's coming out and going, hey, you don't understand. You don't understand. They're, they do good. And they don't. Let, let me just say right off the fucking jump, right? Uh, and I don't want to get on my high horse, but I don't feel like any game developer, uh, when, it, when it comes to sensitivity readers for fucking books, ESG, thank you, Pink Bunny. And you don't even know your talking point. I get caught up in, in the moment. Sometimes the brain and the mouth, they're not in sync. But thank you. Uh, right? You know, when it comes to sensitivity readers, uh, I don't believe in that shit. When it comes to um, consultants telling you how to do your game, I don't believe in that shit either. Because that's a form of censorship. It's a form of telling the developer, telling the guy who's came up with the idea to change the idea that they had, right? The idea should be able to live or die by the market. The market should decide whether they want this or not, right? Uh, by having someone come in and going, no, change that. No, I don't think that's going to work. No. Uh, you're already changing the vision of the creators, and I hate that. I fucking hate that. That's what art. fucking yeah. That's what Comic Skate is partially about, right? It's partially about creators being able to create things the way they see fit, and whether or not the the audience buys it is it's up to the market to decide if they want it or not, right? But they're putting out what they want, right? Uh, sensitivity is the key. Censorship, bullcrap. Yeah, look. It's ridiculous that you have to go to somebody and go, "Hey, can you look over this to make sure that no one's feelings are hurt? Uh, could you, could you, could you make sure that everyone is happy with this?" Right? No, I, I don't want to do that. Uh, like, imagine I don't know how the rest of the panel feels, but that's like, imagine I mean. if games like in the Ukraine are being made right now, and it's about you know Ukrainian people. Imagine if like a sweet baby ink company went in there and said, "Oh, you got to insert some black people in here. You got to you know insert." Oh yeah, they do that. Yeah. Dude, that's what they did with with like uh, what was that one movie? Oh, fuck, it was like the uh, the D Day movie. They're like, there's not enough women in it. They were like, everyone was like, there was no women in war during the war. Yeah. Like, what the fuck you know did you mean? want? So like, like make it make sense, and then you know that's fine, I guess. But I really don't want any third party out there trying to influence any type of the game plan studios make. Like I'm buying them for because they're their creative vision. You know, not because so now I know how party black people ended up in a God of War game. That's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, why would a company want to deal with sensitivity? They don't. That's why the lady said that if they don't want to deal with you, you basically terrorize them and threaten them. Say, well, if you don't hire us, or if you don't change your game to be more sensitive, we'll make sure to go on Twitter and tell everyone you're an ist, you're a phobe, you're a this. Not, not only that, our ideas. that they, also, they also lose money for... Um, for making the game. So these uh, companies like BlackRock or anybody who invests in making games won't invest in these companies if they don't get good ratings. You know, yeah. if they're not inclusive, supposedly, or if they don't hire these uh, companies that scare them. Yeah, because they look at their ESG score and then the BlackRock and them invest based on the, the score. So, hey, you hire us, your scores, we're going to make sure your score goes up. We're going to put in the good word. We're going to do what oh, yeah, we'll start The Witcher series, yeah. And being how games are expensive right now, they'll take any kind of money from anywhere it comes, you know? Yeah. Uh, all right, let's, let's uh, see what else Eurogamer has to say. Uh, Kenny, uh, who has written for games including Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales, Telltale's The Walking Dead, and the upcoming Marvel's Wolverine, posted a thread on X yesterday. Some of you don't seem to understand how narrative consulting on games works. She began, but don't worry, I do. Oh, man, she's going to tell us exactly where we've gone wrong, guys. Uh, during a game's development, a narrative consultant will be hired by studios to help fleshing out or tweaking narrative elements. Let me stop you right there. Right? 
A consultant shouldn't be helping you tweak or fleshing out narrative elements, right? They're supposed to consult. If they're changing things, they've gone beyond the consulting phase, right? If they're actively helping you write it, right, to flesh out uh, narrative elements, yeah, they become it's not develop- consulting. development at that point. Yeah, you know, if I say, "Here's my story," right, and I go, "Hey, could you read this over and let me know?" You know, like an editor. That's what an editor does: reads over and makes sure it's all good. And hey, you know, this doesn't make sense, or you, you left this thread hanging, or you know, this didn't come to a satisfactory conclusion, or you really don't have a story. Uh, you know, you, you got to add more rising action, falling action. You know, all all the all the things, right? That's an editor. But if somebody's actively helping you write the story, it's not a consultant. That's not an editor. That's a writer. You hired an outside writer to come in, right? I You're not you, writing an, it. There's not enough um, female characters in your frog book. Get on that. Yeah. <laughs> female main narrative character. consulting is a massive scam. Uh, I feel art was made for years without them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, it's a form of control. It's a form of uh, controlling not only art but the culture right they want to shape the culture and make you uh, feel and think a certain way about certain individuals certain characteristics they're pretty much putting their world view in the video games when it shouldn't be that way it should be about the video games in the world that is created for them right and so uh, she goes on to say narrative consultants do not get the final say it doesn't get into the game if we as developer don't approve it well again let me stop you right there because they've already said that they give you ideas, right? And in a hundred percent guarantee, if they if you if they said, hey, you should add more black people into your into your God of War, and you told them no, they would run over to Twitter and be like, they're they're racist. We we told them they should, we suggested really that they should yeah. put you know we should put black people in their game, and they told us no, and they said we wanted all white people. We wanted to make an all white people game. They would denigrate you and throw you so far under the fucking bus that no one would find you. Right, and then you, as the developer, would be fired because your company would not want the backlash. They would not want the headache to go along with Sweet Baby Inks, fucking insane Twitter posters calling you ist and phobes. Right? They say, "Oh no, that that person there doesn't work for us no more. We got rid of them because yeah, they're an ist and a phobe. We hired this new uh, trans disabled lesbian uh, developer that's going to listen exactly to what Sweet Grumpy Baby Inks wants." Ninja. I was telling him that uh, it would be one thing if God of War or you know Santa Monica, whatever their name. Decided to put the black characters in there on their own, right? But knowing yeah. this is what happened, we have to look at it differently now. And the thing is, we won't know if this is the reason why, you know, because they don't put out in the games this is where they mess with our game, you know. So it's suspicious, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like, bro, we know we're getting these ugly characters because we have ugly women making them, but uh, we don't, we won't know. And in Samba's right, this is the other right because it's a three prong attack. One, it, it's you, you get the uh, the developers and the game studios all scared. Two, you, you uh, basically attack anybody who tries to call it out. And three, is if publishers don't agree to it, then the SJW-dominated legacy media give the game minimal coverage. Yeah, suddenly, your game doesn't get all the front page coverage. It doesn't get all the, the highlights, Kotaku, and all these big, uh, you know, even though that they're, they're falling and they're failing, they're still the big ones, right? And they're still where the eyes go. When you want to know what's coming out, what's going on, uh, as much as I hate to say it, people still go to these websites, right? Uh, yeah. And then I guess a, a one review score by somebody that never even played it. Uh, Pink Bunny Zero says, where are the sources for these claims? Who has been fired or harassed other than this one case? Well, there you go. All you need is one case. Right? Come on. Come on, Pink Bunny. The fact that it I, happened already is a problem, right? Yeah. We, we've seen Gamergate before. We, I've seen all the fucking logs. I was... Uh, a, a games journalist. I've heard the conversations. I know the things that are said behind the doors. Okay, uh, it would disgust you to know uh, the incestuous nature of the fucking video game industry. Okay, oh, that's yeah. why Tony. Games journalist. That's why Tony wears the colors. Yeah, that's why I wear the colors. Yeah. It says they consult. They do research. Pitch ideas. Why are they pitching ideas or doing research? Right. They shouldn't be pitching ideas. Again, they should be looking at your idea and helping you. Uh, remember, you're supposed to tweaking and fleshing out, not pitching brand new ideas, right? Now, now we've gone beyond what you said at the original statement because that's pitching new ideas. 
Uh, giving feedback. See, that one I would accept. Okay, they, they read it. They gave feedback. Hey, no, that's not that great, you know. And maybe even write scripts. Guys, we went from... Uh, they don't write scripts Jesus to... Oh, actually, they, they, they write scripts. Tony, give me your script. Let me rewrite it for you. Make it more uh, palatable for the masses. Uh, <laughs> we went from helping fleshing out to just... Straight up, they, maybe they write scripts. Yeah, they write scripts. I, I'm sure what they do is they go, let's see what you're working on. And they, they hand in a new script. They go, here's the, here's our script. This is the one that you should probably use because yours is fucking racist and phony. Yeah. Uh, but none of that gets into the games unless the core dev team agrees with it. I'm going to keep saying that because it's key. Sweet Baby is not, nor is any consulting group coming in to wreck games. They're helping smooth out plots and deepen characters. They ease the burden on the core narrative team they're additive in every way. Yep, Again, uh, that's what an editor does, right? You're not hiring editors. You're hiring a consulting firm that has a mission statement. And that mission statement was very clear that they wanted to add diversity and woke elements into the game. They've changed their website. They've removed a lot of things in the last couple of days. But it's really clear what their mission is. It'd be like saying if I opened up a new company, it's called Sweet Mexican Inc. And my mission statement was to make sure that Latinos are represented in games. And then every game that I worked on suddenly had Latino characters in it. And you'd be like, well, you can't really uh, blame Tony's company for the, the inclusion of Latino characters suddenly. This is this is a natural evolution of uh, video game development. No, it's clearly that you hired me and I did the thing that I said I was going to do, right? Sweet Baby Inc. has very clearly said that they want to add woke to games. You've hired them. Your games have gotten woker. Ergo, that's what they did, right? So one plus one equals two, people. Stop gaslighting me. Stop trying to tell me this shit isn't happening when it's clearly happening. It's clearly been happening. And now we know the root cause of what has been uh, going on. Am I wrong, gentlemen? No. No. You know what? Um... People are killing art. See the this Kenny person is this a guy or a girl? It's a lady. It's a lady. Do you know? Do you know what this reminds me of when she's explaining what these consultants do? Do you ever see that Key and Peele sketch where the guy comes in and tries to fix Gremlins too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is why I imagine when when she talks about it, it's in the game. Uh, these people, these people, and they try to gaslight you, try to call you crazy, try to say that you're. Uh, the problem. You're the issue uh, with this. Look, uh, Potion's clearly the leftist on the panel. If, if I was wrong, Potion would be giving me shit. And clearly he's on board with this. Uh, yeah, Potion is probably the farthest to the left of us. Mm. Four of us. I'm a little more center of Potion. But yeah, I also see this as a we're actually in the, We're actually in the correct order of rightness. Right to left. <laughs> Top to bottom. We have the whole spectrum here. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wizard's right. Why Sweet Baby Ink isn't real. But if it is, it'd be a good thing, right? They, they, try, they try over and over again. And remember, I'm the guy who goes, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold on. Let, let me get to the bottom of this. Let me look into things. No, no. Clearly, it's a coincidence that Mary Jane kind of looks like that developer. They didn't model after her. That's the lady. You can see. Uh, you've been using Glamour Shots. That lady had jaw surgery. Uh, clearly, when she got scanned, her jaw was a little fatter due, due to the surgery and stuff like that. Right. I'm there to make sure that, that the bullshit is, isn't uh, just sliding through, right? But this is clearly what's happening. It's clearly been demonstrated time and time again. And when you got guys like Arami Ismail coming out and defending Sweet Baby Inc., you, you know you, you're fucking, you're over the target, right? When the, the uh, what do they say, when the chaff starts flying, you're over the target. You know what I'm talking about, Finbar. You're, you're yeah, in the military. I know what you mean. Uh, says, Sweet Baby Inc. has helped with and consulted on a broad spread of blockbusters, including God of War Ragnarok, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Alan Wake 2, and Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Guys, guys, God of War yeah. Ragnarok, Damn. which is which, which, which cucked the shit out of fucking uh, <laughs> Kratos, Marvel Spider-Man 2, w w which suddenly added that weird side quest with the, like, the, the deaf lady... Uh, and uh, all the other, uh, you know, Mary Jane, her, her model being changed and all that. Alan Wake 2, which added the, the, that whole female protagonist into the game. Yeah, Alan Wake 2. And Suicide Squad, which is which took 
models from the same series and somehow downgraded it. A game made years, years after fucking the Arkham Trilogy suddenly had uglier models. And not just uglier in like, oh, her face, but like uglier in just all around ugly. Like just bad art. And somehow, in a game made years later, right? By the same by the same studio. It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. I don't know what South of Midnight are is, but uh, I'm worried about Marvel. I was excited for Wolverine at first. Now I'm now I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried. Yeah, Remnant Two is the goat uh, after Elden Ring. Uh, the Deaf Lady in Spider Man Two was completely forced. Yeah, it was. Yeah. He was signing with his mask on. It was weird. It's the weirdest fucking thing ever. I can easily imagine this consultancy team saying, you know, we need to put the, a scene for this one character. Make her be playable a little bit. I can see it. Well, Spider-Man? <laughs> yeah. I know people are complaining about that segment. Uh, Arkham City was peak Harley Quinn. It was. It was. Yeah. Uh, Right. Telltale Harley Quinn is my favorite. <laughs> uh, says uh, Sweet Baby Ink, blah blah blah, uh, as well as Marvel's Wolverine and South of Midnight, which are both yet to be released. Kenny called its employees quote some of the most talented, passionate people we've got. Uh, yeah, I wonder why. You you want to get those good boy points? Hey, no no no, we're defending you, Sweet Baby. Don't 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 uh, don't, don't don't throw us don't throw throw, throw us to the wolves. Uh, Alan Wake 2 director Kyle Rowley took to X earlier in the week to dismiss rumors that the game's FBI agent Sa- Sa- Saga Anderson was originally meant to be white and Sweet Baby Inc. was somehow the reason why Saga is blank. Any developer and consultant Rami Ishmael uh, backed up points made by Kenny adding to his own post that as a consultant you must understand, quote, your work is advisory and your position is easily eliminated. Why, why then? Uh, name me one studio who... who Fired Sweet Baby Ink. They brought him in and said, no, nah, you're no good. And they fired him. Name one studio. Do you think Weird. Sweet Baby Ink dig up a load of dirt on them before they get in there? No, they just threatened them. The, the lady was at a fucking game developer conference talk where she said, we will terrorize you to do what we want you to do. We will put the fear of God into Jesus. you and say, basically, we, we will uh, denigrate you publicly if you do not go with uh, what we want. And again, uh, he he uh, they didn't put the, the the tweets from this guy. I wonder what it was he said exactly. Uh, all he said was it's absolutely not true. Wow, that that cleared it up because game developers who are being accused of being part of a conspiracy definitely trustworthy, right? Uh, guys, uh, little little hint here, game developers. If someone accuses you of saying, "Hey, you've changed your character from white to black based on Sweet Baby Ink." Saying no is not a fucking answer. You should show, here Here are the development documents. Look, here are the original pitch documents, or here are the original sketches for the character, clearly showing the character was always meant to be black, right? That would shut people up. That would prove your point, right? Not just saying no. I could say no all day long. Tony, you ever sleep with a married chick? No, of course not. Is it true? No. But I could say it. Real easy. It's real easy to say things is what I'm saying. You know what the sad part is? All these uh, FNT zeros, the the relationship, all of them actually helped this fester. If you ask me, because they've been acting like idiots this entire time. People weren't taking aren't taking them seriously. So these guys were able to infiltrate. Yeah, the underbrain. The gaming them. industry. Exactly. Yeah. Anybody who has legitimate concerns like us again will be ignored because we're lumped in with them. Yeah. And here's the result. Someone said the other day that as was right, but in the wrong way. Guys, you have to, you can be passionate, you could be forceful, but you have to be sane, okay? Yeah. Yelling and screaming like a fucking. EBS dog. said it, I think. He said that yeah. he sounded like a retard. That's the problem. Yeah. You know, us in the know, we're preaching to the fucking choir, right? Preaching to the choir. They know, uh, they agree, they're going to they're gonna back us up. Uh, but it's people outside the bubble, right? 
Those are the ones that have to look at you and go, oh, this guy's a fucking raving lunatic. I'm not going to listen to what he's saying, right? He might be right, but he's a fucking raving lunatic. I'm not gonna, but if you're rational, if you're calm, if you explain things in, in a clear and concise manner, which I obviously can't do, I can't be concise at all, but if someone else could, right, then that's how you open eyes. That's how you open people's minds to the uh, truth of the matter, right? Because we've seen, if you watch Biggest Problem, Dick tried to explain this very issue to Vito, and Vito was like, no, no, there's no way this is happening. And I love Vito. Vito's my boy. But, man, he is a team player. Vito, you are the teamiest team player who ever team played. Okay? Uh, you know this shit's going on. I know this shit's going on. Uh, we just got to make sure that the people out there know. All right, but Rami, who is a piece of shit himself, he says... Uh, no, this is from old shit. He's, he's a piece of shit from way back. This isn't like... I, I know this guy. Not personally, but you know what I mean. Uh, as, as a game industry consultant, let me tell you, consulting requires three things from you. One, to understand your work is advisory. Two, to understand your position is easily eliminated. Three, to be so damn good at your work that others will continue to pay you to listen to one and not do two. Uh, yeah. Um, show me. Again, this is this is the thing, right? If Sweet Baby Inc. had improved games, you could easily show it. You could go, here's what we were going to do. Here's what they suggested. This is what we ended up with thanks to Sweet Baby Inc. You would have gotten a worse game. You should be happy. No one's doing that, right? The simplest thing that would squash this whole quote-unquote conspiracy, nobody's doing. I wonder why that is, right? I can easily go, guys. Here's what George had, su had suggested I do, right? George Peter Gaston suggested that we start our comic book with a one-page establishing shot, right? That was his suggestion. Uh, he even suggested how the, the, the shot should be framed and everything, right? In great and I detail. Can easily, yeah. In great detail, and I can easily show you guys that, right? And I can tell you I shot it down. I did not like what he had su suggested, but I took it under advisement, and I said, hey... I'm not going to go an establishing shot, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a, a one-page opening, uh, like four to six panel sort of setup so that when we get to the two, three-page splash, it'll have a, a greater impact, I think, in my opinion. Right? So I've taken his advice, and I can show the steps that we've gone through, and I can show you what he, had, he suggested, what we went with, and how the finished product was, right? They should be able to do the same thing. They should be able to say, here's what we started with, Right? Guys, this is why Sweet Baby Ink's good. Here's what we started with. Aerith in a one-piece with, with everything covered up. But they came in and said, nah, you should probably make a two-piece and uh, show off some of them goods. And then we went, hey, that's a fucking great idea. So we put her in a fucking bikini, right? Then you go, oh, yeah, fuck yeah, Sweet Baby Ink. You're, you're awesome. We love you. We, we got we got Tifa and Aerith in fucking bikinis. But they're not doing that, right? And it's very, very weird, right? Again, if you want to squash conspiracies, if you want to squash these rumors and these ideas that they're they're doing harm then you show the good they're doing but you're not because they're not doing good and you know they're not doing good you know what they're suggesting what they're doing and what they're forcing you guys to do to your games is not what gamers want and if you showed it they would be pissed the fuck off with the things they didn't get because you were forced by sweet baby ink and the strong arming of the leftist media to do Right? It's just that simple. It'd be a real shame. It's mafia type shit. It'd be a real shame if you got called an ist or a phobe on, on Twitter and then and, and a bunch of articles. Life letters. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Kenny created Haley Cooper for Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, a black dev character, and as stated actress Natasha uh, speaking Ophiel, of was key in fleshing out Haley. A combination of internal and external consultants Plus, Ophiel herself worked on the game's accessibility to help ensure Haley was a positive representation of the deaf community, as Victoria found out when she interviewed Ophiel and Insomniac about Marvel Spider-Man 2. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure this uh, Mary Kenny lady is friends with people at Sweet Baby Inc. I'm pretty sure someone uncovered that. Uh, so that, that's my thoughts on Sweet Baby Inc. Uh, don't like them. I think they are a bad thing for the industry. I think... Uh, they might lead to a crash. If there's a crash, it's going to be because of things like this. Because people are just going to stop buying games. You know, there's so many. I have 500 games on my back catalog. I don't need to buy a new game. 
Realistic AAA game. games are already shit as it is, right? Yeah. You know, I, I could just stop buying games. And I'd be happy. I'd be fine. There's probably a lot of people like that with all the Steam sales, all the uh, PSN, Xbox, Nintendo Switch sales. There's a lot of us who could just probably stop buying new games. And then the industry would have indie to. Games like I do, yeah. all the boomer shows. Yeah, I'll just work through the backlog like Tony's saying. We, we'll fucking die before we get through the backlog. Yeah. The, the industry will, will have to, have to understand that, hey, we don't need you. You need us. Right? They need us as customers. We already have bought so many games and we can play old games or, or games we haven't finished yet or, you know, we can go in and, like I said, get uh, indie games. They need us. 